Okay, this is chapter 8, and this is on the difference of two means and two proportions. And section 8.1 is on the difference of two means, large sample. It's also called the unpaired t-test. And the unpaired t-test is when you're finding out something about the means of two different groups of people. When you're finding out the uh, means of two different uh, groups of people, that's called an independent sample. And uh, we would do what's called an unpaired t-test. Okay, finding out the difference between means of two different groups. Okay, uh, example one says uh, test the effect of the, you want to test the effect of a herbal supplement on uh, improvement of memory, and you randomly select two samples, one to receive the supplement and one to receive a placebo. Well, persons receiving the herbal supplement were not related or paired with those in the control group. There were two different groups of people, and so therefore this is an independent sample. And since the problem is about averages or means uh, of two groups. Uh, two different groups, then this is an unpaired t-test. So let's go ahead and do the test. So we got, uh, we're comparing the uh, memory ability of people that took some sort of herbal supplement, and here's their results. We sampled 95 people, and their average score was 77 with a standard deviation of 15. And uh, for the control group that just took a placebo, we sampled 105 people, and their mean was 73, was their average score, with a standard deviation of 12. Well, the experimental group did better than the control group, but is that enough to go ahead and make the inference to say that uh, the average here is significantly uh, greater than the average here to kind of give uh, support that the herbal treatment does something? Well, since we're dealing with means and we're de dealing with two different groups of people, we're going to run the unpaired t-test. So on your Excel sheet, you go to the unpaired t, and we're checking to see if the experimental group, the average is significantly greater than the control group. So that's a right tail test that we would be doing. And my group one is my experimental group, the people that got the herbal treatment. I'm checking to see if their average score is significantly greater than uh, the people in the control group that got the placebo. And it said to run it at the 0.05 alpha level. And here's all your data in, your N1, your mean, X bar for group one, your standard deviation for group one, your sample size uh, for group two, your uh, X bar for group two, and your standard deviation for group two. And as soon as you put this in here, we get uh, our test statistic, which is greater than our critical value, so we reject the null hypothesis. Also comparing p-values, we see that this p-value is less than my alpha level, so I will reject this at the 0.05 alpha level. So my summary at the 0.05 alpha level would be at the 0.05 alpha level, I was able to show that the average memory score for people in, uh, well, the average memory score for people that take the herbal treatment is significantly greater than the average uh, score for people that don't take the herbal treatment. Not just for these 95 plus 105, that's 200 people. Not just for these 200 people, but this is making the inference to the entire population. In other words, this is saying that the average um, for people that, uh, if you take this herbal treatment, your average will be better than if you don't take it. So it really leads support for the herbal treatment thing because it's statistically uh, you know, we're making an inference up to the whole population. That's why we're saying mu here, not x bar. So it's showing that this is significant. Now you could say there's problems with this test. For example, maybe these people that are in here just are already have better memories than these people right here. So maybe it would be good to do a before and after test with this, these group of people before you uh, test them to see if the herbal treatment make the difference. So, uh, but. Anyway, that's the results there. Now, typically, we would say, well, if this is the p-value, the p-value doesn't change. And if I change this to 0.01, I would get do, do not reject the null hypothesis because this p-value, 0.02, is not less than an alpha level of 0.01. It turns out, though, that this formula, this is a very complicated formula to do by hand because the p-value, the formula that's used to get the p-value changes depending on whether your standard deviations are significantly different or not. And at uh, the 0.05 alpha level, it turns out that the standard deviations uh, are significantly different, but if I change my alpha level to 0.01, the standard deviations are not considered significantly different, which means that you use a different formula, which means that the p-value actually changes. So what I'm saying is, is that you actually need to check and make sure that when you change this to 0.01, that the p-value doesn't change to be lower than 0.01. Yeah, so let's go ahead and check this at 0.01. If I change this to 0.01, watch what happens to the p-value. 
it changed. But it didn't change by that much. It still is not less than this alpha level. So the most significant alpha level is the 0.05 because at the 0.01 we weren't able to show that the uh, experimental group's average was significantly greater than the uh, control group average. So the most significant alpha level would be the 0.05 alpha level. Now if uh, we were asked to do uh, high uh, confidence intervals for this type of problem, it gives you directions here that uh, the confidence interval is based on your data that's in this area. So you have to put your data over here for it to calculate the confidence interval that's right here. So let me just take these numbers right here and I'll copy them and I'll go over here and do a pay special and I get those in there and now I have my confidence level. What confidence level is this? Well right here it says the confidence level is equal to 1 minus the alpha level. So if this alpha level right here is 0.05 then this is a 95% confidence interval. So I'm 95% sure that the, uh, the ex experimental group did somewhere between 0.21 up to 7.79 points better on average than what uh, this group, the control group, would do. So see if zero isn't in that interval, then that's a good indication that you're going to get a significant result there because this is positive on both sides. So meaning the control group uh, on average did between 0.21 to 7.79 better than the uh, ex uh, uh, con control group. The experimental group did on average just much better than the control group and that's for the entire population. And if you wanted to change that to let's say a 99% confidence interval, you would change this to 0.99, sorry, you would change this to 0.01 and now we'll have a 99% confidence interval here. And you see we don't get a, a reject the hypothesis on this and another reason is looking at this confidence interval, zero is within this confidence interval, mean, meaning that the uh, con the experimental group could be doing up to one point less than the uh, control group or up to eight or nine points better than the control group. So uh, that's another way of looking at it. Now I'll finish this section on the uh, next video.